Good afternoon. My name is William Ling. Today, we are honored to have the Honorable Elsie Le Ngoi Si, former and the first Secretary for Justice of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Ms. Leung, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for coming here. Ms. Leung, little did you know, you were actually my role model because when I was still a ignorant law student, you were already the Secretary for Justice. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say so. So your success actually inspired me much more than those legal drama TV shows did. <laughs> so um, I'm curious about what motivated you to pursue a career in law. Um, when I graduated from uh, secondary school in 1958, I took the matriculation course, which is the same as now is Form 6 and Form 7, mm. um, uh, 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 to get myself qualified as a law student. Mm. Now, in my days, there was only one university, mm. the University of Hong Kong, mm. and it had no law faculty. Mm. So if you wanted to follow the, uh, the lawyer's career, whether it's solicitor or barrister, you have either to uh, go to United Kingdom mm. to, to uh, take a law course, uh, uh, um, or you would have to uh, sign an articles of clerkship um, with a practicing solicitor. Um, if you have a law degree, it would take um, three years. If you do not have any, do not have any law degree, then it would take five years. In my case, I entered into articles of clerkship uh, with a solicitor, a very senior solicitor, uh, for a five years term. During that five years period, I had to sit for the um, qualifying examination set by the Law Society of the England and Wales. Um, and uh, during the first two and a half years of the articles, um, I had to um, pass part one of the examination. Mm. And if um, I did not pass them during the first two and a half years, I would have to, the, 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 the articles would be stayed until you pass, and then you continue with the second two and a half years. Um, uh, after finishing the five years articles of clerkship and um, passing the, the part one and part two of the Law Society qualifying examination, then I got myself admitted as a solicitor in 1968. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, in my days, I also had a role model, but our role model at that time, uh, it was Perry Mason mm -hmm. on television and Sir Patrick Hastings. In, the, in other books with very interesting stories concerning lawyers. So uh, when you qualified as a solicitor, what was your major practice area back then? Uh, in those days, um, we had a general practice. Um, in other words, I had to do uh, magisterial court cases, um, pleading guilty or fighting out in court. Um, and the, um, the, the other major part of my practice was Tennessee matters. Uh, in those days, a lot of buildings had to be redeveloped. Mm. Um, some of them were pre-war buildings, and for which you have to pay uh, and and you have to uh, you have to pay compensation mm -hmm. uh, for the recovering the property for development. Uh, because in those days, uh, pre-war buildings were, uh, had rent control. Mm. They pay a very small amount of money in comparison with the new buildings. Mm. Now then, the, the, after they've done a lot of these old buildings. Uh, the, the developers started um, to redevelop the post-war buildings. Mm -hmm. And um, in those days, you could only terminate the tenancy uh, either um, if you want to rebuild mm -hmm. um, or if you want to recover possession for your own use. Mm -hmm. So that covered a large part Mm -hmm. of our practices. Mm -hmm. In other words, we did both civil and criminal, mm -hmm. and there was no, no, such, no such specialization as nowadays mm -hmm. when you break into um, very detailed uh, sections. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I had an all-round uh, training, um, including the litigation, convincing, commercial old, um, mm -hmm. uh, matters and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you have to know a little bit about trademark and patent and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, although that was not our main practice, you, you have to know almost everything. Okay. <laughs> so in your early career, um, was there anything important or significant that sort of changed your trajectory of your professional career? 
Well, um, actually, I follow the same path as most uh, lawyers. In other mm -hmm. words, mm -hmm. when they were young lawyers, they had to run about in court mm -hmm. and so on. They did a lot of litigation. But when one become more um, uh, established, then you would stay in the office to do convincing and mm -hmm. other more lucrative matters. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the uh, litigation matters were left either to the junior or to counsel. Mm -hmm. Now, in those days, the practice was um, much less regulated than what it now is. Mm -hmm. um, some lawyers would simply pass the file on to barristers, to counsel, and um, they would charge the same amount as the barrister. So it was easy job. Mm -hmm. But uh, in that case, first of all, you would not um, accumulate enough experience mm -hmm. for litigation work. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, uh, that, that is not fair. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to earn your fee. Uh, you don't just um, uh, receive whatever the barristers was receiving. Mm -hmm. uh, so those, those was my experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned about lucrative. Um, how would you describe the life of lawyers in financial terms back then? At that time, uh, um, the lawyers made most in conveyancing because, as you know, there was a lot of uh, property development um, and actually um, selling undivided shares uh, and units started in the 50s and 60s. Uh, so um, at, at that time, um, a lot of practice uh, uh, practice comprised of convincing. Mm -hmm. um, some people think that it was easy job because um, you need only have to print it out, mm -hmm. <laughs> print the, the convincing form and the, the, the clerk will fill up the, the, the gaps and so on. But uh, actually, that you not be doing good service to your client. Um, the solicitor would have to take charge right from the start when you have to do the land of a certain zone. So, so that goes back to the previous practice. Mm -hmm. You have to know every step mm -hmm. of the um, work, otherwise you would not be able to, to tell your staff what to do. Uh, so you know, in the beginning, when I was going through my articles of clerkship, I had to go to land to land office for search, company registry for search, mm -hmm. and also to stamp office to see how the pro process was done. Mm -hmm. So I went through every step of the practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so if being a private practitioner was so lucrative back then, then why did you yourself switch from being a private practitioner to public service? Well, it was rather accidental. Okay. Uh, actually, um, um, most lawyers do very much about public uh, law. Um, uh, I do was not very, um, uh, had little opportunities of them, um, exposing myself to, to the public uh, uh, the public work. Now, um, in um, 1993, mm -hmm. um, Hong Kong um, went through the political reform, um, guided by the, the, the last governor, Chris Patton. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, um, the original uh, plan for transition, that is the through train, um, was derailed. And in 1993-94, um, the central government decided on the um, setting up of a, a, preparatory, um, a preliminary committee for the uh, work of the uh, preparation committee. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they went through, uh, and the, the committee was divided into uh, several sections. Mm -hmm. One of it was legal matters. Mm -hmm. And we were concerned that nothing much was done regarding the, the transition of the legal system. Mm -hmm. So um, the, 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 a group of people, including myself, 10 of us, started a study group uh, and went through um, important issues like, for example, um, you know, the right of a vote, for example, um, the uh, Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. for example, the Garrison Law, and so on. And um, we did some research and provided advice to both the central government and also to the Hong Kong government. Um, we, yes, so th that is why I started interested uh, in public law. Uh, and <clears throat> actually, well, the, my practice was, was um, rather general practice. So I had experience in both civil and the criminal matters. Mm -hmm. um, and we had some exposure in those days. There was very few judicial review. So at least I had experience about judicial review. Mm -hmm. um, in 1997, I think it was the beginning of 1997, um, C.H. Tong approached me 
and said that there were several candidates and you're one of them. So at that time, I had no interest in um, joining the public service. You know, when people join public service, pension was one of the um, incentives. And so you would join when you're young, so that when you retire, you get a, a, a sizable pension. Now, when I joined public service, I was already 58. And I joined the, 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 the public service before the accountability system. In other words, I was um, engaged as a civil servant. <laughs> and I also, I, I just wasn't prepared. Mm -hmm. But then finally, for various reasons, uh, they decided on the, um, uh, appointing me. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, I turned down the appointment. But the, well, I was born and brought up here uh, in Hong Kong. So if um, there's something need to be done, I find no reason to, uh, to, to reject it. Mm -hmm. I think I need to serve Hong Kong, mm -hmm. being uh, somebody born and brought up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So ultimately I agreed. But uh, at that time, it was quite yeah, just a few months before the um, reunification. Mm -hmm. And um, the atmosphere was very good. Everybody was looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and very cooperative. Mm -hmm. You see, between um, the April and the um, end of June, we managed to pass, uh, uh, the, the Bush Legislative Council managed to pass 13 bills, mm -hmm. including the amendment to the Public Order Ordinance and the Society's Ordinance. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we also went through the procedure of consultation. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the relationship between the Legislative Council um, and the, the elected uh, members of the Legislative Council um, and with the, the, um, the, the government board and um, uh, the, the, the government officials was quite good. So everyone was trying to make the work. Uh, so the, um, it was very cooperative. Uh, so I, 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 I um, was ready to um, step in on the 1st of July, 1997. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if it was a coincidence, then I suppose it's a very happy and successful coincidence. Um, so if you were the first Secretary for Justice, how did you feel um, when you first knew that you were going to take up the work? I, I was quite worried because as a lawyer, as you know, there's a solicitor. Um, all you need to do is to do, do the file before you, do the case before you well. You satisfy your client and you have, you have done a good job. Mm -hmm. But for serving the public, at that time we had six million people. Mm -hmm. To please six million people was not an easy job. People's views are diversified. Mm -hmm. I knew that it would be difficult, mm -hmm. uh, but I did not expect it was so difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, speaking of difficulties, what were the most challenging tasks that you had faced and how did you um, overcome those? Yeah, um, the, one of the, 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 um, the one aspect was that um, our job was to have to ensure a smooth transition. Um, and um, because um, at, at, at that time, you, my job was first of all to preserve the then existing system. Mm. But at the same time, the, there was change in constitutional order. You have some new aspect, you have some new factors that you have to implement. So, and, and then we knew not so much about the uh, legal system in the mainland, the system and the practice in the mainland. And um, in, we are in implementation of those new areas, um, uh, we, it, it was not very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure you were under moments of pressure um, given that amount of challenging work. Yes. So how would you handle pressure? Well, at that time, I mean, we were so busy that you had little time to think. Uh, you just deal with the matter when it comes before you. And that was what I used to do. I mean, um, as, as, as I said, um, um, my incentive was always to do the job before me well. I'll try my best. Uh, not always successful, but at least I try. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever a new problem comes out, I must say that we had a very good um, um, the government institution mm -hmm. in the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. Everything was set out in a system. The system comprising five different divisions, uh, including the law drafting, mm -hmm. uh, criminal prosecution, mm -hmm. civil uh, uh, advisory, mm -hmm. um, legal policy, and the international law. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it was uh, each headed by a law officer. Mm -hmm. In other words, it was a deputy to the Secretary for Justice. And uh, they each have a very well set up system, um, each person handling uh, certain jobs. Um, so the, um, all I need to do would be to learn from them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, decision would be made by the Secretary for Justice. And ultimately, uh, she, he or she would be responsible for the result of it. So it's not just handling the matter to your subordinate, but you rather, you have to be responsible for it. And, and, and I built up relationship with the law officers, with the, the, uh, the, the uh, lawyers of the department, mm -hmm. um, and we were working happily together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, two really important things happened in the month of October 2005. Mm. The first thing was you retired from the role of Secretary for Justice. Mm. The second thing was I myself qualified as a solicitor. Oh, okay, uh, but of course the second one is not as important as the first one. So my question for you is, when you retired from the role of Secretary for Justice, did you think you had achieved what you set out to do in the beginning? Um, actually, I retired in October uh, 2005, and um, I um, continued for another three months mm. um, uh, as a member of the um, Constitutional um, Development uh, Committee, mm. um, which handled the, the um, political de uh, reform. Uh, it, that was the first time we attempted to change the method for election of legislative council and of the chief executive. Uh, that was the first attempt. So I continued for another three months. Now you said that whether I've served, um, achieved the goal which I set, set out to do, um, there were ups and downs, there were storms we had, we had written through, but on the whole, I was very um, um, relieved because I had a good successor and I was sure I, I had confidence that he would continue with work uh, and, and we develop, um, continue to develop our legal system. Uh, mm -hmm. So how would you rate your performance? Was it a gold medal or a silver medal? <laughs> well, there was no medal at all. <laughs> I just I, 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 I just did the work which I had to do, mm -hmm. uh, which was to um, ensure a smooth transition uh, for that, despite there were a lot of the storms uh, during my the term of office, like the right to vote issue, like the um, public order ordinance, um, and uh, there were also uh, the, um, bill of, the the human rights issues and so on. Uh, the interpretation uh, of the basic law and all these. Um, and then, of course, the BL23, basic law, Article 23. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Issues. So uh, there was never a quiet moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so in any in any event, um, that we were, I was satisfied that mm -hmm. the previous system remained unchanged, mm -hmm. and at the same time we were able to implement the the, the, um, the, the constitutional order as prescribed by the Basic Law. Mm -hmm. Okay. What then was your most memorable or enjoyable moments in your time in the Department of Justice? I think there were many, many, many um, memorable um, uh, uh, incidents in those days. Uh, uh, of course, as I, as I suggested, when we did the first uh, interpretation of the law, mm -hmm. it was really a good fight. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of the difference in the two systems, in the mainland system and the Hong Kong system, so um, uh, and the difference between the common law system and the, and the uh, civil law system. And um, we had to, to take pains to explain not only to the overseas um, uh, authorities and, lawyer, and, and the legal profession, but also to the local, uh, uh, local one. Um, uh, as you understand, the, in the common law system, uh, the authoritative interpretation of the law um, lays with the uh, judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, the, uh, uh, but in the Chinese system, you have this particular interpretation system. Mm -hmm. um, the interpretation system um, is the, it, it, it's because it was necessary because China is a vast country. Mm -hmm. um, it has different provinces, different situation, and if people have different interpretation of the same piece of legislation, um, that would have conflict, and therefore you need a high authority um, to um, interpret the, the law. Um, and uh, that um, 
when it applies to Hong Kong case, mm. the basic law was in, uh, promulgated by the National People's Congress um, and um, is under the civil law system. Uh, but when it comes to its implementation, then it is the um, criminal law system. Mm. Uh, so the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the common law system, um, everybody can interpret the law, mm. but uh, the only authoritative interpretation would be by the judges in the court in administration of justice. Mm. Uh, so the, you, when you ask people to accept an interpretation by parliament, by legislative body, um, then it, it was difficult to understand. Mm. Uh, but then it's, um, it took us a lot of time uh, for lawyers to accept you. As you know, in the beginning, there was uh, nearly a thousand lawyers uh, taken to the street. <laughs> Uh, so, but uh, the, then I think I'm glad that gradually this was, has been accepted as part of our system, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and also the right to vote no issue. Mm -hmm. The right to vote issue was rather um, uh, worrying because um, a lot of people came to Hong Kong illegally, and that also caused danger to the lives of the, um, the, the illegal migrants. Um, they came by the, by the, bound themselves to the bottom of the truck of the lorries or they came there, uh, in the boat uh, covered by a lot of goods and so on and when chased by the police, the marine police, they would push the illegal immigrants into the sea so, so it was rather worrying um, and uh, we were also um, uh, our um, provisions, our education, our social service, our medical service uh, was not um, uh, would, would not be able to cope with uh, the rush of a large number of illegal migrants. So it was rather worrying. It was only in the, um, after 1999 when, the, the, when there was a decision of the Court of Family Appeal uh, that the um, illegal, that the, that the uh, tide of illegal migrants stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you mentioned about your successor when you retired from the role of Secretary for Justice. You know, when presidents of the United States leave the White House, they would usually leave a letter to their successor, either mm -hmm. giving them advice or wishing them luck. <coughs> did you do something similar to the Honorable Wang Yanlong? No, I did. I don't think he did. <laughs> when in any event, when when I departed, I did ask. Um, the, when I faced the public and uh, informed them of my uh, resignation, I did ask the public to give him support, and I then I also thank the. Um, my colleagues in the department and in other departments. As you know, the Department of Justice serve all the government departments. I mean, without their support, I would not have completed my eight and a half years term of office. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand that after you have retired from the role of Secretary for Justice, you voluntarily gave up your previous matrimonial practice so as to avoid possible public perception that you might gain an unfair advantage in courts. Could you tell us something about that? Well, actually, um, in, in the solicitor's practice, as you know, we are um, able to specialize in certain areas. Uh, before I joined the government, um, I was um, uh, doing quite a lot in the matrimonial practice. But um, I, I think after, uh, after I returned to uh, practice, I find that in some cases the opposite party was rather unhappy. Um, you know, he or she thought that uh, I was gaining advantage over the other side because of my um, previous position. Mm -hmm. So I thought that well, matrim in matrimony dispute, it is already hard enough for them because of this emotional mm -hmm. stress. So I, I did not. I said that I, 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 told, I told myself that I shouldn't um, <clears throat> take up matrimonial courses uh, except for the purpose of. Um, an amicable settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, when it actually come to a bitter fight in court, mm -hmm. um, then I should not add to the <clears throat> emotional trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So, so would you say it was a big sacrifice? Well, it wasn't a big sacrifice because after I retired from the government, um, I also took up the position as the deputy director of the Hong Kong Basic Law Committee. Mm -hmm. So I have not been uh, had a very um, uh, I, I, I was thinking easy with my practice. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of public service, you are known as a champion for women's and children's courses. Could you tell us something about the work you have done in this area? Mm. 
I think in 1975, um, uh, we, uh, I and some uh, my, my friends in the profession um, set up the Hong Kong uh, the Hong Kong Federation of Women Lawyers. Mm. At that time, it was known as International <coughs> Women uh, Lawyers. Uh, 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 it's called FIDA. Federation, the International the Abogados, mm. so it's FIDA, F-I-D-A. Mm. It came from a Spanish name uh, for, of an international women lawyers uh, organization. Mm. First founded in 1942 in New Mexico. Mm. Um, um, that, um, uh, the, uh, the, the association was keen to take up women and the children's issue because um, previously women were the uh, position uh, was um, unequal mm. uh, to men, um, and they need somebody to speak up for them. Mm. Uh, children cannot speak for themselves, mm. so um, we took up issues of uh, women and children, mm. um, and we, with the benefit of this international organization, which had annual, which had by annual conference, um, um, uh, and where all the lawyers in the world gathered together, and we learned what happened in other countries regarding women's rights and children's rights. Um, and we, that, that, uh, and uh, f for that, we participated in the United Nations, um, the Commission of Women's Status. Mm -hmm. um, we followed the development elsewhere and see what could be applied to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I believe that um, the first time we set it up, it was the first uh, International Women's Congress. Mm -hmm. That was in 19, um, the, 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 uh, that was the first one. Um, we, uh, in Hong Kong, the, we also celebrated um, the event with other women organizations. Now, um, and um, that, from time to time, every other year, we had the annual congress, and also we, sometimes we attended. Um, we would get rec accredited as the um, uh, status B um, NGO mm -hmm. uh, and entitled to participate in the NGO forum of the UN's uh, Commission. Um, just so, um, uh, for that reason, we keep up with UN's um, proceedings and congresses and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for example, in the year 1979, uh, it was the International Year of the Child. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then we took up the children's issues, including leaving children at home and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course, so when we started, there was no family court in Hong Kong. Um, the family court, which was set up um, afterwards, was quite different from the original idea. Mm. The original idea was that it's not just the court, mm. but also you have to provide you with other service, supporting services. Mm. Uh, for example, we also took issue with them, the, the, the visiting rights, um, the custody cases and so on. Uh, the, the, there should be a visiting code for the divorced parents so that they would be more um, friendly, more amicable in exercising the right of access and so on. So, I mean, those are the things which we were interested in. Um, of course, after five years, we hand over the Hong Kong Federation of Women Lawyers to the second next generation. Mm -hmm. I don't think one should occupy the post for too long. Mm -hmm. um, we, it was started with Jacqueline Lam, mm -hmm. uh, myself, and um, the, the, several of the, the um, senior lawyers. Senior, I mean, but now they are very senior. Many of them have retired. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, that was what kept uh, us interested in women's mm -hmm. uh, organization. And in 1995, we took part in the Fourth World Congress of Women in, in, in Beijing. Mm -hmm. I think it's all about giving back to society. Um, do you think once we wait until they have success in their professional life or career before they start giving back to society? Well, I mean, in so long as you get established uh, as a solicitor, um, then if you can spare the time, I think one should give back to the society. Um, uh, uh, and, and never mind is a big or small jobs. I first started my voluntary work um, as um, a stand-in for a, um, uh, a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. Uh, so, and, and also I also assisted the handicaps. Uh, when they first formed the, the Hong Kong Federation of Handicapped Youths, uh, they had the, by the, every other week they had the, the, the gathering and so on. So um, I, I started with small things, uh, and I think uh, it's very rewarding as well. 
Um, now let's turn um, to our own legal profession. How do you think our profession has changed over the years? Oh, very much so. When I first started, we didn't have all these um, modern gadgets like um, a computer and so on. A letter sent to United Kingdom um, will only um, we, uh, the, the reply would only come after two weeks. Mm. It takes about seven days to go there and another seven days to come back. Mm. And in between, you have to wait for the um, other side to deal with the matter. Um, but nowadays, when you do, uh, send out an email, uh, you get your reply to it when you're still sleeping. Mm -hmm. So the pace is much faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and the practice is also much sophisticated. Mm -hmm. In those days, we had um, uh, individual mortgage, mortgage, mortgages mm -hmm. uh, who did come in every month with a return basket mm -hmm. uh, to collect money, uh, to, re to receive interest and so on. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, the that's of, of the, the, the lender no longer exists. You only have syndicated bank loans and mm -hmm. so on, and it's much more complicated than before. Um, the, the, the practice, uh, and also I think the impact of e uh, practice is very uh, is going to have impact mm -hmm. on the profession. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that they're, they're talking. I think law society is also studying mm -hmm. uh, about the, the practice on on the net, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, young people would have to face the change. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. So what do you think are the opportunities and challenges of our legal profession today? Um, of course, the, the opportunities are much um, uh, larger mm. but if you use them. Mm. For example, um, the cross-border uh, practice, mm. uh, the, 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 the uh, Greater Bay Area and so on, uh, a lot of people have been doing the, uh, the pioneering work. Uh, how could we take benefit uh, of this cooperation amongst lawyers um, in the Great Bay area and also the um, e even the Belt and Road. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but at the same time, then um, you have to, to to handle better, much faster, much more efficiently uh, in order to keep with the changes. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a big challenge. Mm -hmm. So what career advice would you give to young members of our legal profession? Well, have an open mind. Uh, don't confine your practice to to, uh, to, to local um, affairs. And then, of course, the, 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 there's a lot of changes, not just facing uh, lawyers, but also even doctors um, and architects and so on. Um, the e-commerce is uh, going to be um, uh, would uh, would be, have much impact on our practice. Uh, and also the, um, the um, regarding the, um, the legal system, uh, we have a new constitutional order since the first of July, nineteen ninety-seven. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have completely mastered it yet, mm -hmm. but uh, we have made a lot of um, progress, uh, particularly with cases mm -hmm. on the basic law. Many of the articles have already been interpreted by the court, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and um, you can also see. There's a lot of progress in the Chinese legal system. Mm -hmm. uh, so how we can learn from each other? Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, how could we implement each other? Uh, I, um, it's very important. Um, I understand that some lawyers would uh, like to seek equal um, right of practice in the mainland. But the point is, our um, advantage is that it's two systems within one country. Mm -hmm. Um, so if the, we, we, we have to maximize um, the use of our system and not, the, for example, some say that we should have the right to practice in the courts in the mainland. But if you do that, the, you, even if you can, you are allowed to do it without seeking for uh, uh, examination and acquiring qualification, then do you know the practice? Do you know how to practice in the mainland? It's not fair to your client. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we can implement each other, for example, in the WTO disputes. Uh, they're, they're in the mainland, they have, they have to face many of these challenges mm -hmm. um, because of the SUSTI system. Mm -hmm. uh, the, we have often been accused of them having subsidies, and unfair subsidies and so on, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and we are challenged on that. Now, the clients are mainly in the mainland. 
gathering evidence and so on would be in the mainland. But at the same time, the presentation of the case in before WTO courts, um, that I, I, I think Hong Kong lawyers can do better because we are used to the Western system. Uh, and so far as language is concerned, and so far as the, the, the way of thinking is concerned. Uh, so we, we should complement each other rather than, um, than competing with them in their jurisdiction. So there are lots of opportunities if they find the right way, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So broadly, um, what are your hopes for the younger generation of Hong Kong? And what advice would you give them? Well, I think that, um, that there's a lot of challenges they are facing. Uh, they have to, to, to continue to develop our legal system. We have a very um, good system because the, the basic law provides a written constitution. Um, it is stable. It doesn't change easily. You cannot change without going through uh, legislation in the mainland. At the same time, you have the versatile common law system, which um, doesn't have to change the law. It can, you can, by um, you know, you're applying cases, applying the reasoning and so on, um, implement uh, the law without changing the law. So that when the two are com the two complement each other, you have a very good environment for the legal system to thrive. If there's one thing that you would want people outside of Hong Kong to know, what would that be? Well, I think they should um, judge our success not by the challenges we face, but rather how we overcome it. And I think Hong Kong has done a good job in that in um, implementing the one country, two systems. Mr. Long, we know you have a very busy schedule, um, but perhaps just one last question for you. Um, you have been quoted as being an ordinary person who encounters extraordinary things and sorts. Um, to be honest, I'm not quite um, understanding this because I understand that you are an extraordinary person with enormous success. So uh, my question for you is, do you find these quotes accurate? And if yes, why would you say so? Well, um, what I've uh, spoken about the, my joining the uh, joining public service is an example of it. Um, I was um, solicitor practicing, I was happy with serving my clients, and then suddenly I was thrown into the public service. Now, I didn't expect that. Um, but uh, when it comes before me, the only goal would be to do it well, to try my best for it. Um, as I said, I was not always successful, uh, but um, having tried, I think I, 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 I feel that I've, finished, uh, I've done my job. You know? um, and it, it was so interesting, it's so varying, it's so, so different. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of things were unexpected. Yeah. But um, uh, I, I'm thankful that I had the opportunity of serving Hong Kong people. Mm. Well, I can understand that, but I'm still convinced that you are an extraordinary person <laughs> <laughs> after your explanation. Um, okay, so as promised, uh, Ms. Leung, um, we will let you go now. Again, thank you very much for your time and for sharing your variable experience, which are indeed very insightful. Um, and I hope to be able to catch up with you soon on some other occasions. Thank you, William. Thank you very much for doing the interview for me. Thank you. Ms. Leung, here is a little token of appreciation for you. Oh, that's very pretty. And uh, I've seen it before, but I never expected that I would be given one. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you.